And here we go to the top right of the map. We currently have our Protoss player for the GSL. And his opponent starting to the bottom left of Daybreak. Is the Casper Zerg already ahead one map in this best of three? Yeah. Uh, no, I'm starting to think about some of the Casper players who have done well as Zergs. And the first player that comes to mind to me is Sulky. Yeah. And it may be uh, Sulky who is actually uh, our player for this match. It's not, you know, it's not something that I can say 100%, but it's just something I'm speculating on. He played really well when we cast this game at WCS Qualifier. So that was actually really well done. On the other hand, we did not see every single Zerg player that they had, so there might have been a few others that uh, performed well. But Solki definitely one of the players that did a great job here. And I, I encourage you guys, uh, since this is a live broadcast, to actually tweet at us at Calder and at ProxyWolf. Um, once the team is revealed, especially who you guys think the, the player is, whether it's the GSL player or Kessel player advancing, because we want to hear your thoughts. We want to kind of have some interaction with the viewers here on the show. I'm on a limb here. Um, we cast it a lot these days, so if I'm wrong with this, please uh, bear with me. Wasn't Zero also Zerg? Yes. So Zero ended up in the final, didn't he? Yes. So it could also be him. Yeah, Zero uh, definitely doing really well these days, despite... Uh, you know, still having to focus heavily on StarCraft 1 until recently. He's been looking good. And there we have the expansions, by the way. Once again, uh, the hatch after the pool has been started. And to the top right, we see the Nexus first for GSL Protoss once more. And stylistically, I wanted to note that he put his first pile in the main base and is making his forge in his main. This is really strange. Uh, there may be a few reasons for this, one of which being that he wants to try to, to trick his opponent in some way, uh, hide the forge. Uh, you know, I, I think that the main reason, though, is just going to be to get some extra mining. This is really cool. This is very safe uh, against a potential early pool as well. But I've never seen this executed quite like this before. Um, it's going to make his cannon on the low ground, of course, to protect that wall. I'm really a little bit wondering about who the Casper player could be, and uh, from what we've seen in WCS preliminaries, this is actually uh, our best guess that it's either Soul here or Zero. But of course, it's a little bit too soon to tell. After this best of three, the race of the winner of this best of three will be revealed, and if the Casper player takes another map, we will at least know which team he is from. Yeah. He's taking the third base, of course, very, very early in this game, a fast third, and this is exactly what we've seen so many Zerg players do. Daybreak, just a map where ZVP has been all figured out. It's all too common, you know, you're right. It's so figured out right now. Core going down at the wall off, the natural for our Protoss. He's seen the third base this time, something he was not able to do very easily last game. And uh, the curious thing is going to be, of course, does the Protoss attack off two bases or does he try to take a third safely? This probe looks like it's going to get home. Does indeed the Zealot coming out as well as going to make sure these Lings don't get too comfortable on that watchtower. And uh, right now, everything is shaping up to be a pretty normal game. And I think that the Casper players are definitely getting better. A lot of people asked me this on my stream last night. Uh, you know, do you think the Castle players will qualify for Code A? I think it would be very rare and very unlikely if they qualify for Code A next season, but it's definitely possible. We've seen players like Reality already been able to take out a ton of known GSL players in a preliminary situation, which is where the Code A, you know, that's what the Code A qualifiers are. They're like the, the preliminaries for WCS. You don't have time to prepare for your match. But I actually think that, there are, that a few of them will be able to qualify. If you think about it, the, in the WCS we haven't seen all of them because uh, the best ones have gotten their invites already. And even though we had Reality qualify, so and a couple of others were giving the uh, GSL players quite a bit of trouble. And there were also the Code S players participating. So I actually think that in the Code A qualifier, because they also have some additional time, I think that we will see uh, um, a few of them qualify. I think it's it's entirely possible. That's one thing I'm really looking forward to. Just getting coverage of those Code A qualifiers, finding out who's going to get through. A little bit of pressure here, trying to force Lings. Turns out they've already been made, though. Uh-oh, you may get trapped here if he doesn't actually react. Wow. That is That's not, really surprising. Yeah, that is not what we expected here. He loses everything. He might lose the Stalker as well if, he does, if he's not careful. He already lost the Stalker and two Zealots, that's not at all what you want to happen. Only to a couple of links, he could have done so much better with a little bit of micro. Yeah, he didn't micro that at all. He didn't watch, he was busy doing something else and... Uh, 
completely caught up surprise. I mean, I like this pressure that we've been seeing with, with Stalkers and Zealots coming out early, but you got to make sure you micro that. That's The key of this is that your opponent has slow links, so you can out-micro them and take out so many of them. But back at home, he's got the robotics coming up, adding some additional gateways as well. Going up to just four. No Twilight Council this time, so he's going to get plus one armor. And this looks like it's going to be an immortal push when you get the 1-1 like this. May see sentries as the first round of warp ends. That's going to be really important to see. We'll find out as these gateways are now morphing. One player that we have basically not seen on uh, the WCS qualifier is also, for example, Jadong. Yeah, that's a very good point. It could be him. Effort. Effort as well, yeah. Those uh, two did not have to play because they already got the invites. Yeah, Effort actually uh, got the invite for good reason, doing really well in Pro League, uh, being one of the best players, used oftentimes in ace matches. Gotta be careful with these sentries. Oh, I don't like this. Okay, he does save them, but he forces some force fields, and now the Lynx could have even gotten in there, actually. This is really stressful. <laughs> that was well done. I like this a lot. I like how he controls his units here. Yeah. He's just stressing him out completely, forces the force fields, didn't lose anything at all. It was really well done. And now we have something that is not all that common in this matchup on Daybreak in particular anymore. We have suddenly Mutalus. Yeah, we're going to see Mutalus play here. We've seen this a little bit during the WCS qualifier too and in a few of the Code A games. Players just trying to go for a very Mutalus heavy composition and force a good old base race. Just a base trade. So it's not all that common on this map anymore. Every now and then you see it against Protoss, but I really I really like this choice. It's interesting with how much pressure he's currently applying with his Zerklings. It's pretty cool. And he sees the third, so it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and he's already seen the robotics as well. We see Double Forge coming out of our Protoss as well, which is something that's really, really rare. Uh, it, well, actually, until recently was rare, I would say. Uh, it's now becoming more common. We are going to see a sentry drop. This is going to be spotted, unfortunately, by, by these lings. <laughs> yeah, well, those mutalists will have a lot of fun. They just they spawn in time, and we have Blink, and Blink will, of course, help the Protoss a lot when it comes down to defending, but just being spread out on three bases is going to be a problem. I'm actually wondering if he tries to take down the War Prism or if he just defends with his Zerglings and tries to do a, a surprise damage in the main base, but now he takes it out. Yeah, he's going to take it out with these, and he shows the Muse as a result, and it turns out he switched the uh, sentries with Zealots here. He'll target down, looks like, two drones, and the Queen! Nope, he micros it, he'll get it away. And Queen always able to run away on creep. Yeah, and Blink is nearly done now for the Protoss player. For our GSL there's player. There's so many links, Calder. Look at that. He's got 37 links in this group over here. And even with good force seals, this is going to be a hard push to hold. He's only got one cannon. He may actually just fight this army straight up. It looks like that's what he wants to do. And he definitely can. I mean, if you look at it, there is not a lot of anti-air. The links don't come through, though. And I think this is a bit of a mistake, just committing this heavily to the fight with the Mutalists. And he lost too many already. There comes another round of, of Stalkers. And... I don't know, without the Zerglings, this was not the best choice. Yeah, and he didn't have plus one for his Mutas just yet. It's almost finished. He made 11 more Mutas uh, as soon as this attack started, though. So he really definitely wants to, to heavily commit to those Mutas. He's got the, the fourth up, taking a fifth right now. And he is basically preparing. He's setting up for that base trade scenario that you mentioned earlier. He's ready to do that if need be with all these bases he has, with how spread out he is. It's going to be very easy for him to build this Mutalist count. He's already up to 20 right now. And then go for backstabs with it or, or counterattacks whenever necessary. He transitions with the Infestation Pit here, but 20 Mutalists can do a lot of damage, but not in the main base because there are way too many Stalkers already. He tries to snipe, but yep, there is the Blink. And he really wants to fight them. Yeah, I think that's a bit, uh, a bit overzealous to fight them. He does trade okay, but that could have been a lot better. Losing a lot of gas. You know, the Stalker costs more in Minerals than the Mutalist, but... The, the Mulas cost more in gas than the Stalker, so... I mean, it's a trade that you have to decide what you want to make, and usually gas is more important. Yeah, I would definitely not want to trade gas like this. Plus two, plus two already for the Protoss, and in upgrades, he is really in a good position. That's something that... Oh, <laughs> look at this drone count. 117. 120. Yeah. And he's still building drones. And he's going to make a ton of spines here very soon. In fact, five of them started right away. Six... He's going to fight with these stalkers again. I, I don't like this. I think he needs to try to find another entry point. He's he, actually maybe going to get caught by a second group here. He's not really fighting. He's just telling him, stay in your base. I don't want you to attack. Stay oh, where you are. He's going to get caught, though. He's got stalkers on both sides. Nice. Flies right through. Maybe get a pylon here. And oh, the cooldown wow. is not ready. Yeah. 
he could actually get the support potentially. He's going to go for probes instead. Nice control here on these mutas. He needs to be careful that he's not walking into a trap though, but he does a lot of... Well, he does a little bit of damage and he just makes sure that his opponent is not leaving his base. And this is the most important part. At the bottom right though, we have now a few more units for the Protoss player trying to tame another base. But if you just look at um, how we um, at the state of the game now, five bases for the Zerg player. High flick on his way, plus two for those air units. Nine, we already have nine infestors on their way. And still 108 zerklings, but, uh, sorry, drones, but so many spine crawlers. He's building 15 now, and he already has a few of them ready. Yeah, he's gonna need them because this Protoss army is gonna be very hard to fight, especially with how heavy he is in Muse. The 11 investors coming out are gonna be very crucial here as well. They will be out in time. Plus one plasma shields is started. The Protoss army is on three, three. The Mutalist currently at plus one attack with plus two about to finish as we speak. And the Zerglings right now are just at one, one. So he's got a double upgrade advantage with almost done plasma shields. But he cannot, he cannot engage into the Spinecrawler wall. That's impossible with all the, um, uh, with all the investors that we have. If yeah. the Mutalists are there to fight, that is, because right now he's just flying away. Yeah, he's not there, and the spine crawls are going down very quickly to the amount of DPS here. First fungal is decent, he needs a few more, there he goes, the Mutas come in to help fight. He's got so many fungals available here, more Stalkers are coming through though, and with the Concave here for the Protoss army, he's trying to break through, but he just can't quite do it. He needs more fungal though, and he needs a few Zerklings, 34 are, in, are now being built. And the Protoss is killing quite a lot of swine crawlers here, but slowly is losing his shields, he's losing everything on those stalkers, but the Zerklings, they are so important, and here they are. But not enough of them, yeah. he needs to wait for more. He needs more, but he can't wait much longer, he'll lose his spines, he's gonna make a tough choice here. The stalkers continue to break through, he's starting to lose that Mutalist count. The fungals are not ready, he's gonna have to drop infested Terrans. The Zerg is not playing this too smart, he attacked just now with his Zerglings, but without the rest of his army, he's sending him a, small, a small part of his army and he's just allowing the Protoss to kill it. Yeah, I think he should actually just sacrifice this base, try to get some more uh, investor energy ready and go for some more fungals, because losing one hatchery when he's got the hatchery up at the top left may be okay. With how low these units already were in hit points, there's definitely a tipping point. Tipping point. Why does he not fungal the, the choke point? He's, he has at least one fungal, there yeah, it is. he definitely had one, but he didn't do it on time. You're exactly right here. And now the Stalkers, they just have too many hit points. The upgrades on these Stalkers is too much for him. I think he's just gonna... I, he may actually just die here. I think he's going to. GG. GG. Ties up the series 1-1. One, one. Well, do you think he could have defended if he would have played a little bit different? I mean, the spine oh, crawler was pretty was pretty sick. He had 11 infestors. He flew with the mutilus away at first, and if he just just tries to draw him in, pokes a little bit, and flies back, not taking too much damage, waiting for the zirkling. I think he could have fended a little bit better here. Yeah. Oh, definitely so, man. I think if he waited for better fungals, if he if he fought together more often, like you said, um, or even just if he got the infestors out a little bit more, allowed more fungal energy to build up, he got them at the last second. They barely came out in time. I have to admit that I underestimated the stalker force, uh, though, when he first when the pros player first moved in. He had a lot more stalkers than I expected, and also the I think three, three three upgrades. Yeah, the upgrades and, uh, well, with all these stalkers and also the immortals in the back, I actually thought that, I actually underestimated his force a little bit, so he was able to break through the spine crawler wall, the Zerg player maybe would have been able to defend a little bit better, but in the end, we have a tight score now, and this means that Ohana is going to be our third map, so we will see a final map in this best of three between our two unknown players, the Protoss player playing either Code A or Code S, and uh, our Casper player, either yeah. one of them thus far. No, 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 thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Blue against teal. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's much better. <laughs> he's going for uh, going for red again. It looks like. Um, I'm fine with either red or yellow, but blue against teal is not that nice. On well, the as long map. as it's not Zerg versus Zerg, I guess it's okay, but I'd rather not not have to deal with those colors. Blue versus teal, mana versus Nama. <laughs> I think that would be the worst case. Scenario. Maro versus Maru. Yeah, four and four. <laughs> Nama with mana against... Uh, oh, no, sorry, 2v2? <laughs> Is that what you meant to say? Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> All of them. Four players. That would be it. Well, it looks like the players are ready, and they're going to be starting the match in just a second. Um, that is actually like the worst thing ever. If you ever want to troll a caster, set up a show match and let him cast it. Maru with mana versus Moro with Nama. <laughs> I would, I would have actually, fun with that. I would refuse to cast that. Not for a million. No. 
I would not do it. Well, guys, game three is on. Let's jump into Ohana and let's see who is going to advance here, yeah, the Casper or the GSL player.